So if you'd like to talk, if you just wave your hand, then I see that you're ready to talk. So would somebody like to um, volunteer now to uh, tell me what happened during this uh, meditation? Okay, so Nataraj. Hello, I would like to share. Okay. Um, in the beginning, I felt a lot of body sensations, especially throat pain, and it kind of switched between multiple different ones. And then uh, in the second stage, it it kind of came together. There was an underlying breath that was like a soft bed that I was laying on. And it was more like a like a feeling, not not in my body, but just a just a, just a strong excitement. <laughs> strong what excitement? Excitement, yes. You felt a strong excitement. Yes, yes, still. Okay. Very hot in me. And, and what 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 was the excitement about? You're just sitting quietly with your eyes closed. I'm not sure. I'm feeling excited the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe exciting isn't the right word. Maybe if it goes the whole day, maybe there's a different word. I don't know in, in German, but in English, I think excitement is usually something that happens in a few moments, you know? So if you've been excited the whole day, I guess that's not for something happening. It's more like something inside you. Is that right? Yeah, it's some energy phenomenon inside me. I, I call it excitement, but I, I don't know what it is. Right, right. Yeah, I, it probably isn't excitement, but it's, I mean, if it, it sounds like it feels very nice. And uh, does it come with a certain amount of quiet? Are there less thoughts? I mean, there were some thoughts, but yeah, when there are very little thoughts, it kind of comes out of nowhere, and then it's very strong, and then it comes down again. Right, right, yeah. And of course, it's okay to have thoughts. We're going to talk about this more tonight, but uh, there's no problem to, that your mind is working and you have thoughts because. Without a working mind and without the ability to think, you couldn't function every day. The, the, the problem is not that you've got a functioning mind. That's okay. So it's not like thoughts are necessarily the enemy, but there are some kinds of thoughts we can talk more about later. There's some kinds of thoughts which uh, are not really helpful. Yeah. And one thing I think everybody can see looking at your face is that you don't look excited. You look rather mellow, kind of content might be what I, I could say, content and kind of mellow. Anyway, yeah. Okay, good. Let's see if somebody else likes to. Okay. So um, I have trouble remembering your name, actually. So, <laughs> anyway, go ahead, and now I'll remember your name in a moment. Volkmar. You can tell me your name again, actually. Volkmar aus Berlin. Volkmar, of course. Volkmar from Berlin. Sky yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think of you always as Berlin, I'm afraid, because okay. <laughs> I don't have to give you an easier name, you know? Okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Berlin. Yeah. So what happened? Also in dieser Zeit jetzt, in dieser Meditationszeit, muss ich sagen, war, war, hat sich das alles eher friedlich und neutral eher ange, angefühlt. Sonst habe ich natürlich in this, auch... In this meditation time, it felt all very peaceful and neutral. 
Okay, that's good. Yeah. It's very good. It's... I mean, you've been volunteering now since about Christmas time, I think. So that's uh, quite a long time you've been in the house. Du bist ja jetzt seit Weihnachten schon als Helfer bei uns im Haus. Das ist jetzt schon ziemlich lange. Ja, seit dem 7. Dezember bin ich hier, genau zwei Monate jetzt. Und es fühlt sich sehr gut hier an für mich in dieser Zeit. It's exactly since the 7th of December. It's two months now and it feels very good. Right, you're on your annual holiday. Du bist in deinem jährlichen Urlaub hier. You have to get out of Berlin sometimes. Manchmal muss man rauskommen aus Berlin. Ja, in der Winterzeit ist es für mich sehr schön, jetzt hier zu sein. Ich bin ja jetzt schon zum vierten Mal hier, the fourth, fourth time hier. And with uh, uh, Rajan and Rada and Nataraj diese Zeit, just nur, nur zu viert, also nur vier Leute. Und dann seid ihr halt alle zurückgekommen aus, aus Tirovana Malai, back here to, to Leverkusen. Ja, yes, es war sehr spannend alles so. Aber ich habe natürlich auch sehr viele Gedanken, die nicht immer schön sind. Also das wäre jetzt geheuchelt und nicht ehrlich, wenn ich sagen würde, ich habe. Also ich schlafe zum Beispiel. Ja, ja. Okay. Yes, so it was very interesting. Uh, for the first time we only were four people. And then you all came back from Tiruvannamalai. And this was very interesting. But I'm not always quiet and have no thoughts. I also sometimes have bad thoughts. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's an interesting time when we mostly, most of us go to India because we had uh, only two people down in uh, Denia in Spain at our house in Spain and four people here in Hitop in the main community. So with those six people, we can actually run the whole place. And then that allowed um, other people to go off to the Indian retreat, which is rather popular, I would say. And um, okay. it's nice we can welcome you every year during that uh, Indian time. Ja, in dieser Zeit, wenn wir nach Indien gehen, ne, waren nur zwei Leute in Denia und vier Leute hier. Und das hat geklappt, dass wir damit alles bewerkstelligen können. Und so können die meisten dann nach Indien gehen. Und das ist schön, dass du dann immer kommst und uns unterstützt. And what do you call bad thoughts? Was nennst du denn schlechte Gedanken? Das hat meist mit der Vergangenheit zu tun. Von, von It is mainly to go with the past. Yes. Right, right. From, from, from the childhood and all this time of this stuff. It comes sometimes strongly, then it goes away. Ich bin ja jetzt auch nicht mehr der Jüngste und es sind viele Menschen gestorben in meinem Leben auch schon. Äh, aus dem Freundeskreis zum Teil, aber auch aus der Verwandtschaft. Meine Eltern sind gestorben, eine Schwester ist gestorben. Manchmal, wenn ich so, ja, kommen diese Gedanken halt hoch und ich wundere mich selber, dass ich manchmal, dass ich immer noch da bin und das jetzt alles erleben kann. Also du kommst ja von Osho und dann nach Papaji und deine Zeit und das alles für mich ist jetzt dieser Raum nur noch mal da. Und für mich ist es schon sehr was Besonderes jetzt in der Winterzeit hier zu sein. Mit den, mit den Leuten fühlt sich das ziemlich gut an. Alles sehr authentische Leute, das gefällt. Warte mal eben, folg mal, ich ja, muss mal eben ein bisschen <lacht> übersetzen, ja. So, uh, yeah, I'm already a little bit older, so I also, um, there are thoughts from the childhood, but also many people already died, friends of mine, family, my sister, my parents, and uh, I'm surprised that I'm still here. And I really enjoy being here in the winter time. You are were with Osho, with Papaji, and uh, here's a special energy, which I really enjoy. So, for example, if you remember how you were two months ago when you came from Berlin, you probably you have a busy life there. And now, two months later, do you think there are less thoughts? Do you think you're quieter now? Also, wenn du daran zurückdenkst, vor zwei Monaten, als du aus Berlin her angekommen bist, 
Äh, wie hast du dich denn da gefühlt? Hattest du da mehr Gedanken? Bist du jetzt mehr, eher, mehr, eher mehr Gedanken. Schneller vor allem. Berlin ist eine sehr schnelle Stadt. <lacht> manchmal sind die Gedanken, meine, meine Gedanken sind manchmal auch sehr schnell. Also hier ist es eher etwas alles entschleunigt. Yes, uh, more thoughts and the thoughts were faster because Berlin is a very, very fast city and here everything becomes slower. Okay, well, you better come with us to India next year because it's much, much slower there. Ja, dann kommst du am besten nächstes Jahr mit uns mal nach Indien, da ist alles noch langsamer. Maybe it, is, it happened. I will see what happened. It's very... Um, it's, it's, it's like come, coming, coming from Germany to India, it's like we arrived like a load of aliens. <laughs> also von Deutschland nach Indien zu kommen, das ist so, als ob da eine Horde Aliens auftauchen. So eine Horde Außerirdischer. <laughs> One thing I notice is that um, I don't know how you are in the in the daytime because we don't meet so often. But I, in this meeting, I notice that once you start talking, it's like a, a river, you know, starts flowing. A lot of thoughts or a lot of words, a lot of things come out. Yeah. So maybe you can also watch in the daily daily functioning how much you come into stories because these stories are nearly always from the past and in a way there's no point to most of these stories you know it's like stories about things which happened many years ago which maybe don't have really much interest now and where we could decide instead of those stories we can replace them with just silence And this silence okay. will then okay. have an effect Ooh. on how busy we are. Okay. Okay, ich erlebe dich ja nicht so im Alltag, aber hier in dem Meeting kann ich sagen, wenn du anfängst zu sprechen, dann ist das so ein bisschen so wie so ein Fluss, der immer weiter fließt. Und vielleicht kannst du einfach mal im Alltag beobachten, wie das bei dir ist, wenn du redest. Äh, weil wenn wir reden, reden wir häufig einfach nur Geschichten aus der Vergangenheit. Und diese Geschichten, die sind schon, das sind einfach nur... Geschichten und die haben häufig gar keine Bedeutung mehr. Ja. Yeah. Anyway, you can play with that as you're still a volunteer here. You can play with that a bit. Solange du hier noch als Helfer bist, kannst du damit ja einfach mal ein bisschen spielen. Okay. Danke. Somebody else like to share what happened in their meditation? I see we have a couple of our Indian retreat ladies here tonight. Maybe one of you would like to share. You're both looking rather good, I would say. Okay, Mahima. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, wait, I, I changed the headphone to another so, yeah, um, it was very interesting. It was a very warm feeling in, in my heart region, the first step, the first stage. And the second stage, um, there were not a lot of thoughts, but a lot of uh, energy in my, in my head. So it was like right. ex exploding, kind of exploding in my head. Right, right. And the third stage was just peace. Right, right. Yeah. Pretty good, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so you've been back from India now um, about two weeks, I think. Mm hmm so do you find now that in your days, in your daily life, that you ha have this peace for some time every day? Oh, yeah. Um, the good thing is now uh, I'm, a good I'm in a good situation. I can take my time to yeah, come to stillness. Yeah. Take the time to go there and 
yeah some some days there are hours to do it so this is very nice yesterday i was uh, one hour away from from everything you were one hour away from everything okay meaning you were having a good time <laughs> um, and you notice when it's so nice when they, when you're in that hour do you notice that all desire disappears that you're completely content i guess you may be sitting somewhere or maybe walking in the park or something when you you just realize there's nothing you really need everything is perfect yeah just right in the moment just there's nothing to do actually there's just to to observe or do you have any sense of, I mean, for example, if you would be walking in the park or a park, um, are you aware that you feel very connected to the trees, to the grass, to the fresh air, the spit of sun maybe, or the rain if it's like today, that you feel a kind of acceptance of everything around and you feel that you're not really separate from everything that's around? Yes, yes, this is very intense. Um, as I was in India, it was more intense. Um, right. But when I'm here and yeah, I have and when I'm in this special space, yeah, then of course everything is just one, one as right. right, right. I can feel the wind um, like a soft embrace and it's hard so to maybe, maybe maybe your next step is to see that it's not really special see in a way this is one of the most shocking things you know because you know i i meet many people who say they're interested in spiritual or whatever i'm interested in the inner world or something like this yeah and and people have then maybe some moment, one one minute or one hour or whatever, like you're describing, yeah? And then they mentally say to themselves they've had a special experience, a special experience. It's a special experience, meaning that the other 23 hours of the day, that is normal, and this is a special experience. And it's okay, in a way, it's okay because when you, um, you know, when you're beginning to do spiritual work, then maybe it feels a lot like this is a special thing. But of course, the reality is that it's the opposite. That this beautiful space uh, is the normal. It's completely normal, and everything else is something else. I wouldn't call it special because actually it's stuff that we don't really need, most of it, most of it. So, I mean, this is also quite interesting that as you understand what's going on, when you understand that this, this moments or time, one hour, two hours that you're experiencing each day, it seems in one way special. But gradually, you can maybe take it on as being completely normal. Because basically, when we come onto this planet, that is a normal situation. You know, as you know, I have two little girls in my life. And now, because of the carnival time, they spent the whole day with me at home today with their costumes ready. And... Um, they're so, how can I say, they're so present in a way. You know, it's it, it's a kiddish way. It's a, a, not that conscious way. But I'm completely amazed how the whole day, the whole hours we spent together, how it goes so many, it's so quick, you know, because they, they keep me completely, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you? I mean, it's nonstop all day, yeah? and it's in a way it's wonderful because they take me into this, into their world, and for them they would never say this is special because this is completely normal for them. In a way, I'm not saying it's always like that. I'm not saying that because 
of course, things happen in little girls' lives also, where they get upset or angry or frustrated or something. But but for many hours every day, I get the feeling they are simply living in the self. And it's basically normal for them because they don't know that it's not normal. How would they know? And we kind of clever adults, we are so used to a certain uh, kind of, uh, how can I say, a certain relationship with our ego, what in this film tonight we're calling me, we're so used to being connected very strongly to me that when it, when the self exerts itself, when when we're just there in the self, we think this is very special. And uh, I would just make this point that gradually the self can become completely normal again, like it was when you were a kid. And what you need for that is a kind of priority. You need that that is important and remembering stories of you know life in your tax office five years ago maybe is not so interesting whether you liked it or you didn't like it you know so so i think it's quite important to to have a conscious sense of what i'm saying because that can also encourage the system your energetic system to breathe more in the self less in the mind, in the in the thoughts, in the in the ego. Mm. Okay, very nice. Nice smile tonight. Post India smile. <laughs> so we better we better see how Nora's doing, I think. You want to say something, Nora? Can you hear me? Uh, a little bit louder. Um, can you hear me now? Um, I can hear you, but not so loud. Not so loud. I don't know how I can change it. So. Okay, it's all right. It's all right. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So you also yeah. have a, a, a delicate smile. Yeah. Yes. Um... Yeah, there's just a lot of love and joy, happiness in my heart and um, stillness and peace. Yeah, so I'm very much connected with my heart, I would say. All right. And yeah. Ah. And what about all your old, um, I don't know the right word, maybe something like problems? You have less problems when you have this smile on your face? Um, yeah, I mean, I am I would explain it like that, that um, it's all there, of course. I have a mother, I have a sister, there are diagnoses or something, but nothing can really hook onto my heart. It's like mm, there's a lot of neutrality and acceptance for everything, I would say. Right, right. And I'm very, very, very optimistic and positive. And yeah, that also has a good resonance within me and also, yeah, how it's mirroring so nothing right. really, or if people, I mean, I'm, for example, I also live in something, in something like a living project here. Right. And there's a lot of stress always between the people. And it's not really, I don't want to say I don't care, but it's really like, yeah, I just don't care if someone is freaking right. out over something. Is, is your mother living in Cologne or is she no. living in Greece? No, she's living in, not in Greece, in Germany, but uh, 300 kilometers away from here. Have you, have you met her since you came back? No. No, okay. So she doesn't, she doesn't comment on your uh, gentle smile then? Yes, she, uh, of course, she realizes this. And we have, 
but she's good she she was always like not really pulling on me because she knows i'm it's very free here right <laughs> but she knows she's commented and knows or noticed something has changed a bit with you I think she's also just more in acceptance. We we don't talk so much or we don't see each other that often. So right. we just said, yeah, do you want to come home sometime? And I said, yeah, sometime maybe. Then she's just saying, yeah, okay. And then was oh, good. <laughs> I love you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, a, a controversial question. Are you ready for yeah. a controversial question? Of course. So what about your thoughts about David? Have they got more mellow now than they were after the retreat in Spain? Uh, what did you say, more mellow? Mellow, yeah. Okay. Meaning that, you know, after the Spanish after yeah. the Spanish retreat, you had quite strong feelings about John David. Yes. And, um, you know, we, we did some kind of special... Uh, treatment during the Indian retreat and I wondered now whether you feel um, how can I say something has changed for you in this situation yeah very much I mean it's like I really feel there's a lot of love and connection and also I have to say like I saw on Facebook a comment a very very bad one like people reacting to John David. And it's also like, it doesn't really, it's, it, I don't care. I just feel so much gratitude and connection and love for this being. Yeah, this is how it is. It changed a lot. Yes. And sometimes I also see your being smiling always in my heart. It's like, since then I see, of course, it's your face, what I see, but it's for me, your, your being and what you, what your purpose, what your, yeah, what you bring into this world. Right, right, yeah. Well, that's, that's very nice. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, if you offer yourself as a kind of public speaker or a kind of guru who knows something, inevitably that, pisses a lot of people off whether they've ever met me or whether they are just projecting onto somebody who can be projected on you know so i i always knew 30 years ago when i started giving meetings that that meant that a lot of people would get in some ways pissed off about me but you can't you can't live your life like that you know you I mean, you say you're, you're in a living community around you in Cologne. So out of the people there, some you may have a very lovely connection with, but probably there are a few people that you don't like very much or they don't like you very much. And if we allow that to affect our functioning, then um, life doesn't really um, doesn't work very well, you know? As you know, I, I, we, we uh, published this book about Ramana Mahashi's teachings. Two years ago, it was published in English and uh, about a year ago in German. And for many months, we didn't get so many positive comments about this book. And um, so I was kind of waiting, you know. I didn't know if people were going to accept this or not accept it because it the material was from 85 years ago, and there's a kind of controversy if this is genuine material or not. And then suddenly, about two or three months ago, we started to get very positive reviews coming from different people. And um, I don't know if you remember, during the retreat, we went to a, a morning meeting from a man dressed in orange. Do you remember this meeting one morning? Yes. His name is Nusha. Yeah. And he, he's accepted as a kind of authority about Ramana Mahashi. 
and his teachings. Yeah. So at the end of that meeting, we gave him a copy of the new translation in Tamil because uh, he speaks Tamil. His na native language is Tamil. And uh, we had just published the, the, this book in Tamil. So we have it now in English, German, and Tamil. And he wrote us a very nice review, short review. And he particularly said he felt the teachings about self-inquiry are, are genuine. In other words, they, he recognized that they are really coming from Ramana. So this is one of the best reviews we've had because I mean, if, if an expert like that accepts that this material is definitely from Ramana, then you know it, it's tremendously supportive. And now we're beginning a second volume. We're going to make a new volume from some of the other teachings. And um, somehow the whole thing changed. But for, for John David personally, say six months or <clears throat> six months or a year ago, it was a difficult situation because it wasn't clear if people would really accept this material as genuine or not. So I felt that it's absolutely genuine, but many people, not many, but some so-called experts said it wasn't. Yeah. So now some more months have gone by, and now I would say that inside of John David, there's no doubt. You know, there's not even a question. I had a question for about two years, and now this question has been resolved, and there's no question anymore. So this is the working of the self, you see. This is like the working of existence. Nothing is personal about that. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so maybe um, I think we'll play the film, tonight's film. So uh, not not quite yet. I'll just introduce it. So um, I'd like I'd like to um, uh, how can I say? I'd like to say that we've got now sixteen of these what we call short films, uh, less than about two minutes each one. So th these are designed for the modern human being who has no time to sit down and read a book, probably no time to go to a meeting, but maybe has two minutes to spare to um, watch a little film to uh, remind that there is another possibility to our lives. So tonight we're going to show the, the most recent one. I think it's the 16th film, which have been made by Carly, who's probably somewhere on the screen. And uh, this is also a nice story because uh, she's only shortly been living in the community, I think two years. And um, Probably it's only in the last six months that she started to edit these films. And it turned out that surprisingly, she's doing a very nice job with them. Um, and I think you'll enjoy this little film because it, it makes very much the point about the self and the ego. Do we want to live in a deep intuition in our essence from moment to moment in presence? Or do we accept that we're going to live our life in our conditioned mind? So we're calling the conditioned mind the script and the self is the self. So let's just watch this film now. I don't hear the sound. In a way, you could you could see a human being as as a kind of uh, a matrix of two different energy fields. One is the self, which is forever present, 
and is forever constant. And in, in that sense, you are always right. And then another part is like we pick up a script. You know, it depends on your family, depends on your country, on your religion. And there are many scripts. And over our life, we basically act out this script. And we call this me. You can't just say goodbye. It's very difficult just to say goodbye. Because while we still are attached to it as me, then of course we are going to let it go because we think it's me. And me is the most valuable thing. This me stuff can all go and you still, and almost certainly better, live your life. Okay, we'll watch it again in a moment. But before we do that, I just like to give some information. So, uh, God, I try again. So, so he, I like to show. So, this is John Davis' website, and if you go, oh God. That was a silly idea. Maybe this is not going to work. Anyway, I wanted to tell you that if you go to John David's website and you go along the top, you come to Satsang. Okay. Oh, yeah. You come to Satsang. And if you then click on Satsang, you can come to where it says video. And if you come to where it says video, uh, you can find um, short videos. So tonight's video is one of these short videos. So there are 16 at the moment of these short videos. Can you bring up? Can you bring that up? Um, if you go yeah. to the video page. Okay, go to the video page. Yeah, I'm a bit ashamed, but the internet is a bit slow here, so um, just... Okay, how slow is it? Here we go. Okay, okay, so there, there you have it. Go back to the menu. Okay, so we have short videos, about 16 of these short videos. Then we have something that is interesting if you don't know John David. Can we click on topic search? Mm -hmm. So topic search is uh, a collection of um, older meetings. So probably about uh, six, six or eight years of meetings, which happened here in Open Sky House. And the thing that's uh, quite interesting is we've got a device, a software, which we call Topic Search. And I hope it will come up in a moment. But basically, we have, I think it's 50 subjects like anger, meditation, um, stillness, the self. So we have a whole list of these things. And if you click on one of those things, then it brings up immediately, the software brings up the films from the past meetings where I talked about that particular topic. So if you want me talking about anger, then this software would give you three or four films where I'm talking about anger. Can you... Scroll down a bit. Okay, it seems that the internet's too bad. No. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, G go ahead to the uh, interview page. Yeah, mm. or just come back to the menu. Maybe I, maybe it's enough. Okay. Okay, so we've also got films. You see, the next to topic search, we have climatic films. 
And you can find all these films on YouTube. But you'll find if you come to that page, there are eight full length 90 minute films about spiritual subjects. And we've made these films here in the community over the last uh, years, many years. And then if we go to interviews, that would be a page I would like to, to bring up. But it, ah, here we are. So on this page of interviews, we have grids of, ah, here we are. Here, here we have the Indian masters. So about 15 or so years ago, I traveled in India and I met um, some amazing spiritual masters and I made interviews with each master. So on this page, if you click on any of these, I think it's 16 masters, then you immediately get a one and a half hour, two hour video of the original interview I did with each master. And there's 40 masters on this page. So there's 60 hours of Indian and Western masters talking about spiritual stuff. So the enormous archive there of not of John David, but of these masters talking freely about their spiritual teachings, their spiritual understanding. So you only have to click on the photos and you the video comes up. So this is an amazing resource. And of course, those, those films um, have also been published in various books. And you can see these books if you would go to Open Sky Press website, you can see all the books. Anyway, so that's a little bit of uh, advertising, but I think this is the kind of interesting knowledge because on this page of videos is an enormous archive of information. Okay, so let's let's play the film one more time, Om. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to play again this one of script of me. Here we are. In a way, you could you could see a human being as as a kind of uh, a matrix of two different energy fields. One is the self, which is forever present and is forever constant, and in in that sense, you are always right. And then another part is like we pick up a script you know it depends on your family depends on your country on your religion and there are many scripts and over our life we basically act out this script and we call this me you can't just say goodbye it's very difficult just to say goodbye because while we still are attached to it as me, then of course we are going to let it go because we think it's me. And me is the most valuable thing. This me stuff can all go and you still, and almost certainly better, live your life. Okay, so so the intention of this film was to be, in a way, a bit controversial. Because, of course, most of us are completely caught up with me. And, in fact, most people go through their whole life being caught up with me and never experience that there can be an alternative. Uh, everybody on this screen tonight without any question, you all are aware of another possibility. And this other possibility is functioning inside us or outside us or around us. It's, it's functioning constantly. 
and we can call it well in India they call it the self. Uh, in the in the West we Shiva might call it what on on, on uh, in in the West we might call it uh, God. We might call it um, the divine intelligence. We might call it divine wisdom. I mean, you can have your own name for the self, but in India, in the spiritual language, it's called the self. And this is absolutely constant. It's always present. It's always been present. It always will be present. And yourself and herself and his self is the same self. So there is a kind of constant possibility that is guiding us or uh, our life is unfolding inside. It's hard to really talk about it because there aren't really words that are able to describe the self. And so if you want to verbalize the meaning or the experience of the self, then you have to go to poets. And there are some famous spiritual poets, like Kabir would be one that comes to mind. But there are many uh, poets who have tried to describe the self. But basically, we all know the self. At least we've had some moments when suddenly we found ourselves having a special experience, which, as I was saying earlier, isn't really a special experience. This is really our essence. So this is not really special, but it appears to be special because most of the time we maybe aren't experiencing that. And so when it suddenly happens, then uh, something which in a way is ordinary becomes extraordinary. So it can be that suddenly we feel immensely peaceful or we feel an enormous... Uh, Nora, for example, talked a lot about her heart. So she's become aware, much more aware of this particular feeling which she's seeing as in her heart. Yeah. So... Um, as Nora would, wouldn't mind me saying, she has in the past been a fairly mindy lady with a few um, issues going on. And um, clearly uh, tonight we could experience her differently. So this is actually very lovely because I know this is something that she, um, that's, that's an inner, uh, inner wish or not really desire. I call it a longing. She has a longing for that feeling of love in her heart. Uh, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, she has quite a few issues which maybe have prevented her uh, experiencing that uh, feeling that she would like to experience. So, um, yeah, so. So would somebody like to ask something about this? Anybody like to comment on the film? Um, yeah, just wave your hand. I haven't really talked about what we're calling the script because I think we're all extremely familiar with that. Very, very familiar. And everybody on the screen here has somehow come to a moment in their life where they, they're not prepared to carry on being a victim of this, what we're calling script. Everybody's script is a bit different, even though a lot of the scripts, even from country to country, are pretty much the same. I've, I've lived in quite a few countries, like I've lived in Japan and Australia and India, and the United States, for example, those four countries. I was born in England, now I've been living in Germany. So there's about six countries that I've, I've lived in quite uh, deeply. And fundamentally, of course, the, the lifestyle, the, 
situations that happen between people, pretty much the same in every country, pretty much the same. And then, of course, there are certain customs in those different countries which are very particular. And maybe there is also language which can be more or less sophisticated. So all of that changes the script. But what everybody on this screen tonight has come to realize is that they don't really want anymore to be a victim of the script. We want to move from the script to our being, to the self. Okay, somebody like to comment? Okay, so Nora, we're very busy tonight. Okay. No, just about this um, movie. First of all, it's very, very beautiful. And um, yeah, what I can, I mean, I'm very much in my heart at the moment, but the ego is also quite active about the idea even if i know now in my heart that the only purpose is to awake to the to the truth or to the self still the ego is fighting a lot now thinking you need to have or do a job a work which is fulfilling you and which brings sense to the world this is what it's it's a little fight between like the ego and the self at the moment i can see it's not so heavy that i'm a lot in my head or something but i can just observe this the ego is always trying to to get into this and this not letting go of the security and of course there's still a part which doesn't know now i know yeah well this is this is exactly your situation. I mean, you I don't know how old you are, but let's say you're 40. You may be younger or older, I don't know. But anyway, let's say you're 40. So you've had many years of living in a certain way, which is mostly in this script. You've been following a script, yeah, most of the time. And so this script, one of the things about this script is that you know, I need a job, I need an income. I need to pay my bills, I need to blah, 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 you know, all kind of things which the script tells you. See? But actually, all that's not really true, you see. It's not really true. It appears to be true because you've been doing it for many years, maybe 40 years, you've been doing that script. And you don't know really, you have in a way no idea how it could work if you simply uh, gave up on the script and trusted your own essence, right? How could somebody like me, who has all kinds of faults, who's not really so much clever for this or for that, and I don't know how creative I am, I don't know what I can really do, and blah, blah, blah. We have many doubts. We always have many doubts about ourselves. We have many self-judgments against ourselves. So how could I possibly trust that this person with all those uh, defects, uh, how could I trust that my life can go on in a completely new way, which I don't really know, you know? So how, how can you go from the, the, the style of life, which is the script, to a style of life where you are manifesting the self and living in presence from moment to moment. How can how can that happen? It's not so easy because you're stepping, potentially stepping into the unknown and actually is also the unknowable. And you're living surrounded. You say you live in a some kind of community of people, but also you have your friends and so on. And they're all busy li living their script. And uh, they can't understand, in a way, why would you not want to live your script? How's your grandmother? And how's your sister? And how's your 
you know, how's it all going, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And it's an endless game, the script. It's an endless game, you see. And of course, we also, uh, there's nothing, basically, there's nothing wrong in following a script. For example, I mentioned earlier, I have, I have two, uh, two daughters who are very young compared to my age. Yeah? So today I spent most of the day doing homework. So one had a lot of mathematic homework to do. And because of this carnival, they don't have school at the moment. So they're at home and they both have homework. Uh, and uh, so I spent quite a lot of the time today doing homework with them. Yeah? And um, so this homework isn't really difficult. It's very simple for me to help them with the homework. But that's not really the thing. The thing that's more difficult is dealing with their feelings about doing the homework. So maybe they can do the homework quite easily, but they don't want to do the homework. They'd much rather play, you know. They'd rather have their iPad and look at the cartoons. You know, they have other ideas about what they want to do, you know. So then I'm in the position of Papa. And so Papa has to um, be a bit of an authority, for example. Yeah? So this is all part of the script. Yeah? So in one way, you can say that's all script. But in another way, I would also say this is, has been decided not by John David's script, it's been decided by uh, the self. And if I told the story of how it's happened that somebody as old as me um, had met a young woman and together we had made these children, and now <clears throat> they're about to be eight years old in a month's time, how did that all happen? You know? And if I think about it, I, I, I can't really figure it out. You know? But if, if, if I look back, I can see that there was a sort of destiny working inside that put me into some situations. And out of those situations, we en I ended up um, meeting a woman from another country where I'd never been before. And, you know, becoming closer to this woman, deciding, OK, why don't we ha have some kids? And then um, it went on and on, you know, and now eight years have passed and now I spend the day doing mathematics and stuff with their homework, you know. So in one way, this is the script and in another way, uh, this is my uh, John David's destiny unfolding, you can say, and their destiny also. So this is a little bit complicated to understand about the the what is the script and what is the what is the self. And at the beginning of this film, I'm suggesting that we're always right, or if we can always be right if we have a strong connection to the self. If we have a strong connection to the script and in a way, we're not really allowing the self to have such a strong influence. For example, years and years ago, I can remember I was one of these guys, rather rather mindy men from England, middle class English man. I used to make lists, you know, all the advantages, all the disadvantages about some situation. So I, I approach my life very much from my from my mind. And um, now I, I hardly ever do that. Well, I never do that, actually. I can say I never do that. So, so yeah, I remember, for example, can we have um, her back on the screen? Can you say something, um, Nora? I don't know why Ohm is there. Can we have? It seems like Nora, uh, she disconnected. Say something. Huh? What's happening? It seems, she it seems she disconnected. She's not. She's not in the meeting anymore. Oh, she's not in the meeting anymore. <laughs> well, maybe I already said something. Okay. Well, she's not in the meeting. I'm actually talking to Nora, but she's apparently disappeared. So, okay. Okay. So, all right. Anyway, 
Maybe somebody else would like to talk to me. Okay, we have uh, Monica. Yeah. Yeah, here, here I am again after last week. And yeah, that's uh, nice. I was dancing the last week, um, realizing or, or feeling, yeah, feeling or realizing more deeply how beautiful this approach of questioning and sitting in satsang and becoming still watching how how this really goes to the roots and um yeah I realized also somehow I, for the last years, um, I wouldn't say I forgot about it because sometimes, um, especially the last years, I just sat on, down on my couch when I felt excited or uh, overwhelmed or anything like it's too much and, right. and just um, just being with what I'm feeling right and right. out to be to be really it you know really and, and in this things that felt unpleasant dissolved and Sorry, you're saying that again the last sentence? Things, emotions that yeah. felt unpleasant dissolved in, in this just sitting, feeling, watching, and being right. with it, being with it. Right, right. Yeah, not trying to change it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that, that's one of the ideas of my simple meditation at the beginning of the meeting, because um, if you can just accept what is happening, it will change. It changes by itself quite quickly, especially emotions. Yeah. I can still remember um, years and years ago having a girlfriend and saying something to the girlfriend which she didn't like like and then maybe for two days she would have some kind of emotional angst about me and everything got kind of very difficult and um, nowadays I mean this is never happening anymore in my life because I would just walk away I'm not interested to relate with somebody and also not relate with myself who is stuck in some kind of emotion because mm -hmm. if, if you don't, if you just accept the emotion, whatever it might be, you completely accept it. And as you say, sit on your couch, within a few moments, it will change. It just has to change. And the thing that's very beautiful is that it always changes away from the script and towards the self. It's like absolutely natural. It moves away from the nonsense of the ego, the, what we're calling the script tonight, and it moves towards what I'm mean, the self. And this is completely natural. And how much you come to the self and how much you stay stuck in the script, it depends on your life choices, actually. So mm -hmm. you're saying that when something is a bit overwhelming, you sit on the couch and you just, uh, maybe you close your eyes and you just wait. You just wait and you see very quickly it changes and then you move again. You move wherever you go, you move again. And I mean, I, I saw last week and I can see again now when you're talking that you're, you developed a, you can call it a personality, I think, or it maybe it's your character. Uh, you, you're exactly the person who 
have changed maybe your personality towards what I can experience tonight. Because sometime in your life, you made some priority that you valued the self more than you valued the script. So you're saying that maybe I forgot a bit about it. So maybe you have a job where you're pretty busy and maybe it was very successful and it, you got kind of caught up in something. And then maybe you didn't spend so much time sitting on the couch because it seemed very important to be doing whatever you were doing, yeah? But as soon as you, you came to like an inner understanding, a kind of inner priority, then probably since that time, which I guess in your case is quite a few years, you in fact moved yourself much more to your being and much less to your mind, to the thoughts in your mind. Yeah, and it has a lot to do with really being in the moment, being in the moment and being with what is. Also realizing maybe I don't want it to be like that or I don't want to feel what I'm feeling. Also to acknowledge this as one layer. And yeah, I think what uh, for some years I, I happened somehow to... Um, get involved you know there is a, a big spiritual scene offering uh, congresses online congresses with uh, how to change how to materialize this and that and um, uh, some some um, a lot actually it it's it's so called spiritual but in a way, it it um, it doesn't really touch the the core. Right, the core is very simple. You see, um, these congresses they always want to they always have some sort of theme. They want to teach you how to something. Yeah, so it's, yeah. About, it's actually a lot about doing. I mean, it's, it, it's spiritual in one kind of sense, but in another kind of sense, it's not really deeply spiritual in, in, in my judgment, you could say. You know? mm -hmm. Because what, what is being offered tonight, for example, is something very, very clear and very, very simple. It's, it's who we really are as a human being. It, it, you don't need to do anything. In fact, it works better when you don't do something. Yes. I remember uh, in one of the interviews that you could find on that uh, page we were just looking at, um, there was a, a, an American man who was a bit of a friend, and I asked him something like, um, what, are the, what would be the criteria for somebody who wants to be enlightened? In those days, I still use this word enlightened. I don't use that really anymore. And his answer was completely shocking, you see, because he said, you have to come to the point in your life when you don't want anything from life anymore. Mm -hmm. See, this is really shocking because, of course, we're constantly busy with getting something. We're constantly in some kind of desires where we want something, you know, we want to get something because we think if we get that, we will be better. Something will be, I'll be more happy if I get that new chair, which I don't have, or I buy a new dress and I'll be more happy. So we're, we live our lives a lot in, in the desires. And he's saying, you have to come to the, to the point where you don't look to get anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is in a way completely shocking. But if you think about it, it has to be like that because not if you're like wanting to get something means that you're you're surrendering to what is. You mentioned about being present. You're you're surrendering to the presence which is unfolding from moment to moment in your life, and therefore you don't need anything because when you're really present, 
there is such a sense of nourishment, such a sense of completeness, such a sense of oneness with whatever is happening in your life. So it's a completely another experience. It's it's a bit like the difference of listening to Mozart or um, a pop pop song or something. You know, I don't know how to describe this, but you know, it's a, it's a different quality. It's a kind of uh, uh, well, it comes down to consciousness, of course. If if you're a person who has been looking and uh, and considering and becoming more conscious, then you're putting yourself exactly into the possibility that you can live uh, in a conscious way from moment to moment. And along with that conscious moment is also an enormous trust. You can you find that you can trust your life. You can trust how it's working out. You can trust that next year will be all right, you know. And, and this is an enormous change from how most of humanity are living. I mean, it seems to be in, incredibly strong nowadays. Maybe I didn't notice when I was younger so much, but now it feels like the world has created a kind of craziness. So the society is kind of schizophrenic in a way, you know, and it's always in the society there's an enormous stress that you have to be better, you have to be cleverer, you have to be smarter, you have to be, I don't know, all kind of things. Yeah? Mm. But this is all basically bullshit. It's all kind of completely bullshit. You just be who you are. Yes. It's so much about always achieving, achieving something that even even if it's not material or on the outside, even in the spiritual to achieve this or that, this becoming as if the moment is not enough or what I am feeling is not right or okay. Yeah. So I, sp right. I spent the week when uh, that I uh, kitted uh, some abos, you know, when you once, uh, once you are, uh, you give your email address to uh, uh, one of those congresses, you then get a newsletter and invitations to do this or that. Or <laughs> so I really <laughs> uh, right. kind of crossed out quite some things. Right. Well, so you better not give your email to us, you know, because we also have a newsletter. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, this I I somehow I really realized and I shifted a bit my focus that um, I want more to come back to the essence. And and this is what what I'm feeling here with you. And right. yeah, it's it's quite a long time ago actually that I sat in satsang with with right. somebody. And when you were when you when in the past you've had your own teacher, did you or did you go to many different teachers? Well, I I actually mainly had three teachers. One was Osho, another one right. was Balaji Tambe. He was, uh, he was in Pune also a spiritual master and Ayurveda uh, teacher and practitioner. He had okay. some skills. What was his name again? Balaji Tambe. Oh, Tambe, yes, yes, I've heard of him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And later on, I, uh, I spent some time with Tioha. In, he is oh, in he was coming to I think, yeah. He was Osho's disciple who, right. I think he has a community in Costa Rica. Yeah, we went there with in with the family uh, for, for some weeks when the children were younger, when the children were children, now they are grown-ups. Yeah. Uh, we were considering the possibility to maybe live in Costa Rica in the community. But right. as as often the somehow the the problem was um, that how how to make your living 
living in a country like this, you know. Right. Right. And at that time, uh, the internet wasn't so uh, uh, strong. Or doing things online was not so usual and accepted. And right. also, I actually wasn't so keen to stay because I just uh, had passed my exam for practicing uh, cranial sacral therapy in Germany as a high practica. Right. And somehow, I also was excited and curious to to step out with with uh, this and and um, and experience uh, make experience with uh, with me offering this to the world and i kind of was looking forward to to right. work with this beautiful skill so, so how many years ago did you make that decision 20 years ago yeah it was it it was 23 years ago yeah Right. So when you look back on 20 years ago and now, would you say that this cranial sacral, this has made a big difference in your personal life? Yes, in a way, yes. Because also there, you know, I mean, when I give sessions, what I love about it, it is that I can be in meditation in a way. Right. I'm, I'm present. I'm right. present. My hands are in in touch. My hands are touching. Right. And I'm with all my sensations and on different levels. And, right. Um, and I'm even being paid for this. Right. And I mean, you're 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 in a meditative space, but in a way, you're. A lot of the time, I think, from what I understand about cranial sacral, uh, you're actually in the self. You know, it's yeah. like yes. you're in contact with this other person, this other energy system, yes. and your energy system, and and in a way, you're deeper than thoughts. You're deeper than the script. You're you're coming to not no no script, and yeah. in a way. While you're doing that work, I would say very often you're just simply uh, existing in the self. Yes. Hanging out in the self. And you've been hanging out in the self for 20 years. And that has a profound effect on you because I'm very happy we're having this talk tonight because already last week I saw you immediately as somebody who must be, uh, how can I say, must be right for this meeting, for what I'm trying to share. or I mean, you're clearly a very sensitive human being. And I didn't know last week you're doing 20 years of, or 22 years of cranial sacral, yeah? But I've experienced myself this cranial sacral and it has a, it, how can I say it? It's one of the most deep styles of body work, I would say. Mm. Yes, yes. And but when you, you did you spend time with Osho in India? Yes, I I went uh, to India in 1980. I just right. was 20 then, and I I was uh, I was there uh, for nine months when I was there for, on my first stay, and my second right. stay was uh, I, I actually uh, came with a one way ticket wanting to stay forever. But then he, he left uh, uh, Pune, and uh, right. my my second stay was uh, four months. Right, right. Did yeah. you hear of something called Tibetan pulsing? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So, so uh, I was quite involved in Tibetan pulsing with Daraj. You remember Daraj? Did you ever meet Daraj? No, I didn't. Oh, you did Okay. So anyway, I was quite close to him. And he, he was developing over a number of years this, what he called Tibetan pulsing. Mm -hmm. And this was another very sensitive um, body work or energy work. Um, 
So these kind of things suit certain kinds of people. And from my understanding, they, they have a profound effect on how such a person then develops. So I think you must have got a great benefit in the last years from doing this cranial sacral. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what also I um, came, what also um, came in addition was a trauma solution work that I, wow. that I learned in uh, Cologne in, at the Uta Academy. Right. Because do I- live, Do you live in Cologne? No, I live near Frankfurt, but I, oh. I for from uh, 2014 to 2019, I did quite uh, many um, trainings in Cologne in connection with trauma resolution work. Somehow right. it took very long that I realized that um, trauma was inside physically and as well as on other other levels and um, even though I've been on the path for such a long time I um, somehow fear I there was a big issue about fear that uh, for and for this uh, the trauma uh, work was for myself very helpful actually right right yeah I mean in our community uh, we are self-supporting. So uh, we have developed some businesses in the community which bring an income from outside. We have a guest house, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so th that's a work which we all do together. But in working together, gradually people then get to know what are their issues. You, you, so you're mentioning trauma. So maybe in the everyday life, we don't get so much in connection to the trauma. But if you work together with somebody over a longer period, as we do in our community, then gradually, whatever the traumas are, which may be pretty hidden and pretty, in a way, far away, these traumas suddenly become much more um, exposed in the everyday. So when we started the community was about, uh, well, actually 22 years ago, I think, maybe when you were starting, we were starting. Mm -hmm. So in those days, we never talked about traumas. Well, I never talked about traumas. And um, gradually, gradually over the years, I would say um, that trauma becomes a bigger and bigger subject because, you know, you can do meditation, you can do uh, various kinds of seminars, and you can um, you deal with simple kind of mind structures. Uh, so the ego can gradually be reduced. But if you if you really want, if you really have a priority to be living moment to moment, then at some point you come to deeply hidden uh, structures, which are basically coming from traumas. Yes. Either they're held in the cells of the body or they're held in the muscles of the body or they're held in the mind. But yes. these things prevent us really from calmly living from moment to moment. And, you know, when I was doing my, I mean, I spent many years with Osho. I don't know if you know that, but I was with him for many years. And... Uh, I don't remember any seminars about uh, trauma. It, it, they had a kind of university at one point in Osho's ashram where they offered just about every possible thing you could ever imagine. But I don't remember much talk about trauma. And I'm talking about 20 years ago or 25 years ago. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm talking about 35 years ago, I think. But anyway, in those days, I don't remember trauma was a particularly big subject. But I'm sure now, if I would go to Ocean's Ashram, which I'm not planning to do, but I would find that now trauma is much more busy. They're much more busy dealing with people's traumas because as we become more sophisticated and maybe become deeper in our own inner work, we're going to meet this trauma stuff. 
And this trauma stuff's not so easy because it's very deep, most of it. Most of it happens when we were, well, before we could speak, you could say, when we're very, very, very young, yeah. Even before birth, you know, we can carry stuff before birth. For me, it was that my parents had planned abortion and decided <laughs> to start, decided to don't do it one hour before it was planned and somehow um, you you one cannot imagine how much this energy had an impact on me right right yeah yeah yeah, yeah this was, is there was other stuff after my birth because even right. though they decided for the uh, third child they were expecting, they didn't change their life uh, in the way they were had a restaurant. They had already two children and they felt it's already too much with all they had to do with uh, t uh, having the restaurant uh, lunchtime, evening meals and stuff like that and already two children. So I was, I got the bottle every four hours and the diapers was changed, no breastfeeding right. and, and also this schedule, you know. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but, well, I mean, it's, it's clear, you know, in, in our community, uh, I would say 22 years ago, we never talked about trauma. Uh, even we didn't talk so much about mind structures. But gradually, 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 as the community became more mature and people, there are people now living in our community since uh, more than 10 years, you know, and, and, and they know, we know each other very well. So then nowadays, uh, it's very common for, for us to talk about trauma. And uh, I think most of the people who have made this priority because they would like to really live in the self and not in the in the in this script um they've come to understand that what's going to happen at some point is they're going to have to deal with this trauma things because actually these traumas in the end are maybe the final uh, kind of barrier to being free because you can't be free if you've got some deep deeply held situation which makes you respond in a particular way yeah? mm. i remember years ago asking um well actually he was one of the most important indian uh, masters i asked him about the fact that very often i experience people uh, projecting a, uh, a sort of male authority issue onto me because I become everybody's sort of daddy in a way. Yeah? And I asked him about this. Is this completely natural that this male authority thing is always going to happen? Um, and he, his answer was that if you have this, this is a psychological situation and you need to do psychological work to deal with it. Because as he said, the teacher wants to show you that you are the same as the teacher. The teacher is not trying to show you that you're he's better than you. Any, any true teacher wants you to realize you are the same, you have the same quality as the teacher. So there's no question about a kind of authority, a male authority. Uh, so if somebody has that issue and in our community, I would have to say I've experienced many, many times that that people have projected onto me that I'm there. Uh, uh, how can I say it? That they project onto me some kind of authority because because I'm apparently in a position of authority. So yes, I'm in a position of authority, but I'm not trying to show that I'm better than everybody. I'm trying to show everybody that we're all the same. And when we understand we're all the same, this is actually an enormous, uh, deep understanding because then many things could can happen which 
can't happen if you're completely busy with the script. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But what we've also discovered, and if you're offering um, sessions to do with trauma, you must you must know this that that sometimes these things can be very strong for people. So we've experienced quite a few times in our community that somebody has become, if you like, spiritually mature, spiritually advanced, if you like, to some point. And then they've got in touch with some, what I would call trauma, but maybe they didn't see it as a trauma particularly, but something has started to happen. Something is, is like set off inside them. And then quite quickly, they don't like it and they don't want it. And they've left the community. Mm -hmm. I call this ego war, ego war, because it's like you come to a point and then the fear, the pain, whatever it is that gets created when you, if you're like open to some sort of trauma, uh, gets too much. And then you don't like it because anyway, you didn't come to a spiritual community to feel paid. You came here to feel happy, more happy. And then people just leave. And to me, this is extremely sad because when somebody who's matured and has got some a, a deep understanding, um, I've come to understand that inevitably, you're also going to have to come to your traumas and you're going to have to deal with the trauma. You're going to have to feel some pain of the trauma. But the, the prize, you could say, is the possibility of becoming really free. So the, how can I say that the, the, the possibilities of it are so incredible that the pain is not really that much of a problem. But because people don't know what could be the prize, the pain seems too much. Yeah, it, Just recently, it, it, in the last month, we, we lost the guy from our community who's, you know, everybody liked very much and who's a, a very has a very big potential, but he came across a trauma and this in the end got too much for him. And, um, you know, he quit. He just disappeared from one day to the other. Mm -hmm. And when this happens, I feel very, very sad because if you run in a way, run away from something like that, where are you going to run to? You're always going to have to run. I mean, there's no... There's no place to run to mm -hmm. because it's it's you. You can't run away from yourself. And I think you maybe you often have this experience with some of the people that come to you. I mean, yeah, it. I can imagine that in a community setting, it's um, it's different than in a clear therapeutical setting you know um and trauma also what i love about it is that it goes in really small steps because it it's important to avoid that it's so something so overwhelming is coming up that the person is so much kind of flooded with emotion and in this you know i can imagine that um uh, the the um, there is no capacity to look at what is happening from above you know that there's no distance right to, right to, to see to look at it you know that uh, the 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 ego is so um, involved with with the, the overwhelming emotion that it's a way of of the the old pattern then of protect protection by leaving comes through and is dominating then the person. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Actually, it's it's a, the structure of the the child in a way that also separated or you know, but it 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 looks a bit like uh, an old pattern comes in. 
And that's it. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a bit running over time right now, but what I would say to you is if you have some holidays, we can provide you many patients to do <laughs> trauma work. <laughs> Even though you're always, welcome. you're always welcome. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. I actually, con I'm considering if uh, maybe I could come in March. There are a few holidays, not in March, in May. There are a few holidays in May. Okay. Okay. Well, in May, we have, um, I think it's about 10 day retreat in Spain at our house in Spain. Mm -hmm. That might be attractive to you. You can find it on the website. And uh, at Easter, we have, a, I think, three or four days retreat, which is what the, the end of March. Yeah. Anyway, we'd be very happy to see you. And um, um, we have actually a, a lady in our community who is doing trauma work with the people who live in the community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I'm sure she'd love to Great. talk to you. Yeah. Great, yeah. I'll be coming, uh, I will be coming to Hitdorf the, within the next month. I, I will see. Maybe in May would suit me. Uh, Spain would uh, not, would be a bit, a big trip, you know, for me, these 10 days. But we'll see. We'll, we'll meet again. I mean, another thing I could invite you is that we have, I have a group of students who are not living in the house, but like to have a more close contact to me. We call it Sangha group. Mm -hmm. And um, we meet every three months for one weekend. Mm -hmm. And our next meeting is, I think, the first weekend of March. Oh, so maybe if you would like to come to Hidoff, that weekend could work for you because the, the first the first weekend is like an, an invitation weekend. You don't have to commit to anything. And, and then after the first weekend, if you would like to become involved, then you commit uh, for, for a year, I think it is. Like, I don't know exactly. Yeah. But that would be a good weekend where you could meet some of the other people who I think you would easily get along with. In fact, they're they're in this meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. So I will, I, will, I will definitely look in my schedule and and okay. see if I can make it possible. Does okay. it start on Friday or on Saturday? It starts with dinner at seven o'clock on Friday. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So we have Friday. Uh, we kind of arrive together on Friday, and then. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, and we finish around uh, six or seven o'clock on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds really that I, I that resonates a lot for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, that would be that would be really nice. Yeah, yeah I'll thanks. ask Indira to send you some details for that weekend. Yeah, thank you. I don't know. Do we have your email address? I don't know. Yes, yes, you do. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask. In dear to send you the details for that weekend. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I look forward to meeting you. In a... yeah, me too. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, guys. So that was very very interesting uh, talk. And so now we have to finish because I'm. I need to get. Where are we? Okay. Okay, so we have rather a good meeting tonight, I think. And um, maybe this talk about trauma has touched people because these traumas, of course, are very much part of what we're talking about when we use the word script. So in one way, the script can be kind of easy to deal with, but as you go deeper and deeper into kind of unraveling the script, you almost certainly, I would say, everybody is going to come to a trauma, maybe more than one trauma. And so this, this example um, that Monica was telling, you know, that, that her parents wanted to have an abortion because they had already two children and a busy life. So it wasn't personal about Monica. Yeah. And they probably even had kind of planned to have Monica, but then they maybe got cold feet and thought, well, this is going to be too much. We're already so busy. 
but then somehow this has an effect, yeah, on some energetic level, as she was saying, this, even before you're born, these things can affect you. And of course, it's very difficult to know what was happening to you before you were actually born. But I know when I look at the screen right now, there are several people here who in the last time have started to get in contact with um, things that could have happened around the time before or just after you were born. So it takes some courage to investigate those things. But um, in the end, we all have to come to investigate those things. I remember years ago now when I was with Osho, so it was kind of the beginning of my spiritual time. I must have been around maybe 40 years old. And I got in touch with the fact that very often I, I had a kind of gray wash over my life. Or, or between me and life, there was a kind of gray wash. And I didn't know what it was because... I didn't have a, there wasn't a particular issue. And then I discovered, of course, I was born in 1944. So I was born just at the end of the war between England and Germany. I was born into a young, with a young mother. And this young mother had already lost her first husband when I think she was 17 or 18. He he had been uh, he'd been a sailor on a ship which got uh, got um, how can I say it? Uh, sunk the ship sunk and he he was drowned so she lost already her first husband then she met somebody else and uh, they, she became pregnant and that somebody else was, was not in England he was in Germany and she was alone with this little baby. And um, every night on the wireless, she would have been hearing all kind of horrible stories about what was happening in the war. And she would have been alone with, with me. And I'm sure that this, I gradually figured out that this gray wash was almost certainly the effect of that early time uh, alone with my mother, with the war raging around and my father being inside that war so um we all have stuff we all have stuff okay so thank you good night